Happy Friday! First Take is on the road again, coming to you from Foxborough, Massachusetts, home of the defending Super Bowl champion Patriots. You can see the crew getting the field ready there for practice. That'll take place this afternoon. Thank you so much for starting your weekend with us. Skip Bayless, Stephen A. Smith, I'm Molly Karam. Good morning, guys. Good morning, How are you, Mr. Smith? What's going on, uh, I, I want to remind you off the top of this show, you are now in the home of the best quarterback in all of pro football, Tom Brady. Thank that you very much. That bad man, Tom Brady? Yes, that bad man. <laughs> no comment? He's the reigning Super Bowl champion. I'll give you this day to talk your smack. It's all right. It's okay. But That's all you got, man. Will he like be it. the Super Bowl champion coming up this year? We'll get into that in just a bit. And coming up, Rob Ninkovich is going to join us, Devin McCourty, uh, Troy Brown. We're going to have a bunch of Patriots stopping by the desk. But we kick things off with this. Casey Joyner in an ESPN.com column broke down two playoff teams from last year that are due for a letdown. And those teams are both the teams that Skip Bayless predicted to win the Super Bowl, the Patriots and the Cowboys. Now, his reasoning for the Patriots are the Tom Brady suspension. The AFC East is the most improved division. The AFC is filled with powerhouse teams and the offensive limitations of the Patriots. Skip, the floor is yours. <clears throat> Defend your Super Bowl pick. Stephen A. Smith, I want to preface my remarks by reminding you, as I've said many times on this show, I am a big fan of KC Joiners. Okay. But last night, when I read that he had trashed both of my Super Bowl picks, I wanted to KO KC Joiner. I, I, I fell off my chair. He is shooting holes in both New England and Dallas. I guess I can kind of see Dallas, but I cannot see New England. And I'm sorry, KC. I'm going to give you a big no and a big no. Both the Patriots and the Cowboys will win their respective East divisions. Let's start with what Casey Joyner says about how the AFC East has gotten so much tougher for New England. I will give you that. We've had two great days at Bills, at Jets. Mm -hmm. I'm intrigued by both teams. I am not intrigued by their quarterback quandaries on both sides. They don't have a quarterback. You know it, and I know it, and yep. Molly knows it. Mm -hmm. They can't decide between frick and frack in both camps. I'm sorry. And in Miami, you know how I feel about Ryan Tannehill. I'm not sold. They almost, uh, Joe Philbin almost sat him down last year. And c come on, this team has Tom Brady. Nobody else has Tom Brady. So he says, says KC, that Tom Brady last year had an off year on vertical passes, passes of 20 or more yards. Tom Brady had 33 touchdowns to only nine interceptions during the regular season. And his QBR in the regular season was fourth overall. And that was a quote unquote off year. And then what happened? When it mattered most, Tom Brady, and he's not getting enough credit for this, was all-time great throughout the postseason. Remember what he did to Baltimore right here on this field? 33 of 50 for 367 against the Ravens for three touchdowns. And then remember the second half against Indy after the balls were properly inflated, blah, blah, blah. He goes 12 of 14 with two touchdowns for a QBR and a scale of 100 of 98. And then do I need to remind you what he did to the vaunted Seahawks defense in the Super Bowl? 30, 33, I'm sorry, 37 of 50 for 74% and a QBR of 86. And in the fourth quarter, he goes 13 of 15. Are you kidding me? For a QBR of 97? I, I'm sorry. N not only is Tom Brady poised to have another great year, but if he is suspended for however many games mm -hmm. it is, you know and I know he's going to come back with a 2007-style vengeance and take it out on the rest of the East and the rest of the NFL. And in the end, it, Casey says, well, he didn't have much run game last year. He didn't need much run game. He had Gronk. And he still has LeGarrette Blunt, who dominated the playoffs two years ago. And Jonas Gray is still somewhere in the doghouse back there. He and we a couple did get games. To, he, he had that one Sunday night game at Indy for 201 and four touchdowns. And I realize the defense without Revis and Browner can't be quite as good. But you know what? It will be plenty good enough to make it back to the Super Bowl. Thank you very much, Mr. Joyner. Well, first of all, they, they didn't do what they did on this football field. It's, it's well, over there I, I was inside the stadium. The That's yes. number one. Yes. Number two, um, you know, 
This is why I didn't want to be here today. Because I, I didn't. I, yeah, I mean, yeah, this yeah. Is, we're in the Patriots. Yeah. Stop we're here it. With we the want Patriots, you here. You know, yeah. the bosses. I mean, you know, we got a bunch of bosses that are Patriots fans. They love Tom Brady just as much as Skip. I, I'm not it was sure a about that. It was a complete. It's a complete setup. Yeah. Okay, because they all want to. They love themselves some Tom Brady. Yeah. I know he's great. Oh, so what? Oh, okay. So what? That's why he went ten years without winning a dag on yeah. Super Bowl before he finally did it again. Well, but I give him, credit. Though, he? He's only the third quarterback in Super Bowl history. Yeah. I mean. He's only the third quarterback in the NFL history with four Super Bowl titles. And his spread from 2001 to 2014, so I'm going to give him a whole bunch of credit. Nobody else can say that. He's withstood the test of time. But I, I'm going to agree with my, with my man Casey here. I'm going to agree that the, neither the Dallas Cowboys nor the New England Patriots are going to the Super Bowl. I'm going to agree with that. Because? Because, first of all, when I think about the AFC, I'm looking at Andrew Luck. I'm looking at the Indianapolis Colts. I think they've got a shot. I think the acquisitions of Frank Gore and Andre Johnson with an improved defense is going to help them. I think the Pittsburgh Steelers may very well end up having something to say. I think the Baltimore Ravens are not a team to be slept on. Even though I'm, I ain't even bring up Denver because I gotta, I gotta, I'm not sold on how healthy Peyton Manning is. Mm -hmm. But with that being said... I'm just of the mindset that all the stuff that New England's going through, I get it. Tom Brady's going to come back. He's going to be like a gangbuster. He's going to wreak havoc. He's going to wreck shop. I get all of that. But I think losing Revis and Browner and Wolfwick on the defensive side of the ball, I don't think Ninkovich and Chandler Jones are going to make up for those devastating losses on New England's defense. So that's me. When I, and I look at the AFC, and that's just the way I see it. In the AFC... I'm really supposed to believe that the Dallas Cowboys are going to get to the Super Bowl. You got two playoff victories in 17 years. I'm not sold on the Cowboys. You're sold on the Cowboys because you love yourself some Tony Romo. And you love yourself some Des Bryant. You know, you love all of this. I, I, I got mad respect for Des Bryant, too. But I look at Green Bay. I think Green Bay is better than the Dallas Cowboys, as they prove, because whether or not it was a catch, in the end, it wasn't a catch. And the Green Bay Packers are the one that advanced to the NFC Championship game, not your Cowboys, because the accident waiting to happen when it comes to the Cowboys, certainly that was an accident. It should have been called a catch in my estimation, yep. but according to the letter of the law, it wasn't a catch, and that is that. These are the kind of things that happen to the Cowboys. It's a black cat waiting around somewhere. Just when you least expect it, something's going to go wrong because because that's the way life is for the Cowboys, and it's not going to We're change. We're getting to the Cowboys. Okay. Don't worry, case, we'll have time in the, for it. In the case of Green Bay, you know how I feel about that bad man that is Aaron Rodgers. They retained Randall Cobb. They still have Jordy Nelson. Okay, they still have Eddie Lacy. They still got an offensive line that's going to protect Tom, I mean, Aaron Rodgers. And when I look at their defense, I'm not enamored with it, no question. But I think that McCarthy taking some of the reins away from himself, spreading it judiciously instead of doing a play calling and everything else, plus them getting a new special teams coach, I think that's going to help them. And then I look at Seattle. And you know the Seattle, the Legion of Boom, I think the acquisition of Jimmy Graham, is huge. I don't think you're giving that nearly as much credit as it deserves. The Legion of Boom, Cam Chancellor, Earl Thomas, Richard Sherman, and those boys, they will be back healthy. And not only will they be back healthy, but offensively, Seattle's going to be more potent because now Russell Wilson's got Jimmy Graham to throw the ball up to, to go get it, because he's one of the premier tight ends in the game. When healthy, Outside of Seattle itself being his kryptonite, okay. which is why it's a great thing that he ended up on that team. There's nobody at the tight end spot in the league better than him outside of Rob Gronkowski. I, I hear so you. All of those things being considered, along with Arizona, mm -hmm. I think there's plenty of roadblocks for both Dallas and New England, okay. which is why back, I agree with KC. Back to New England. Are you enamored of your Colts defense? Because no. I am not. No. So that's your Super Bowl pick, and yet you cannot defend no, no, no. their defense. We, we, we have openly acknowledged that we reserve the right to change our mind. <laughs> oh. And I said to you, was, oh, somebody, somebody waffles already. No, no, no. See, that's not fair. That's not okay. fair. Because you sat up there and said, let's do this as a subject weeks ago, and you said it's uh, okay. early as you did. Right, 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 so my point to you is this. I'm still not picking New England. I'm simply saying, instead of the Indianapolis Colts, it could very well be the Baltimore Ravens because I think the Baltimore Ravens are hellacious and I think they could potentially give New England problems. I just don't see New England with all of its losses mm -hmm. getting back to the Super Bowl this upcoming season. And I don't believe in the Cowboys at all outside of play. I do okay. believe they'll win the division. I do believe they'll go to the playoffs. Right here, right now, that defense that is right over there yep. somewhere yes. in that building yep. is better than your Indianapolis Colts defense without Revis and without Brown. Okay, okay, that's fair, but I think offensively, Andrew Luck, 
with the crew, with T.Y. Hilton, with an Andre Johnson, with the Frank Gore, with the Fleener, with an offensive line that suddenly decides to protect Andrew Luck just a little bit better. I think the combination of all of those things are going to make their offense that much more potent, and as a result, they could potentially win in a shootout against anybody. Okay, but what has happened when Andrew Luck has faced Tom he Brady? He has completely he, been he's dominated. Been, uh, dominate, like a, devastated at some, and dominated. At some point in Shame. Time, I don't know, but you got to yeah. remember, I believe in Andrew Luck, and I believe every year he's gotten better. Went out in the wild card the first year, went out in the divisional playoff the second year, went to yeah. the AFC Championship game his third year. I think this guy, you know how I feel about Andrew Luck. I think he is a big time stud and i think he is tired of getting beat up by tom brady as he has in the last four meetings and i think he's gonna make amends for it okay last quick point sure. on the new england Patriots. not during the regular season though. okay not when I tom brady first there's comes so back. much focus and right. i loved having mr revis on mm -hmm. yesterday because he was sensational mm -hmm. and i'm a big fan and i'm still a fan of browners who's in new orleans yeah. now but I still look at this Patriot defense, and it's not getting enough credit because of two guys. I, I know we're going to have Ninkovich on. We yep. might have Chandler Jones on. And, and then all of a sudden, Gerard Mayo is back, and he's practicing 100%. Dante, 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 Dante Jamie Collins Jamie is still Collins, there. Yes. And, and we're going to have Devin McCourty on. And I need to say this quickly. Yeah. He doesn't get enough credit. You realize they gave him $43 million guaranteed dollars? Mm -hmm. He gets no shine here because... There are no superstars in New England. Nobody talks about a Devin McCourty who made the Pro Bowl at corner and has made it at safety. He's a big-time player, yes, he is. but, but there, there's no spotlight on him because he didn't have much to say. Mm -hmm. I hope he has a lot to say on this show because he deserves to say a lot and have more of a spotlight on him. He deserves it. You're absolutely right about it. I'm very fond of him. Okay. By the way, when they filled in on first take, if I remember correctly, I think they did a hell of a job. Him and his brother. Yeah, so let, twin, let me yeah. get they, they, they were a lot yeah. of fun. They, 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 I watched them. He did a hell of a job. You know I mean? The he host faced, was okay, but they were good. Yeah. Okay. Okay. We'll who, go who with that. We'll go with that. Who was the host? That was me. That was Paul, Molly. I don't want to get you. That's why it was such a good show. Of course, we know it was good. Oh. But the point is, is that I know he deserves a lot of credit. And individually, I know Nikovich can play, Chandler Jones can play. I just don't think it's a coincidence yep. that the first time you won a Super Bowl in a decade is when you had Darrell Revis yep. mm -hmm. up in this piece, yep. along with a guy like like Browner. I don't believe it. And I just think that somehow, some of the pitchers are going to the playoffs. They'll be an elite team. But I think they'll fall before birth in the Super Bowl. Well, we will have Ninkovich and McCourty up in this piece, and we'll ask them about all these questions, right? Get mm -hmm. into all the defense. Um, as for Vegas, they have, I guess, both of your picks. We know Indy isn't isn't a solid locked one for you, but the Patriots and Indy as co-favorites to win it all this season. But we need to move on to your count. All right, just a year older, just a year smarter, and, and not a rookie anymore. So you know, I've kind of gone through you know, the ringer in, in a year and, and got to see everything, and now it's just... Um, like I said, just coming out here and getting better. It's not as much pressure. It's not as much hype. You know, it's just another guy on the team. And now I can just come out and play and, and do my game and, and really get to learn because that's what I needed to do. I just needed to learn, you know, be patient with this. And, and the thing that I'm kind of struggling with now a little bit is just don't be too hard on myself. There's going to be some aches and bumps here. But when we go in in the afternoon, we're learning a lot from what's happening on the field, which is a great thing. Football right now is my life. And football is what I'm doing and focusing on, you know, 95% of the time. So, you know, there is a little bit of a life out of here whenever we get out from eight to ten or whatever it is but you know off field is off field and for right now football is my life and i'm you know i'm trying to make the most of it all right before we react to uh johnny here Stephen a let's just clarify our chris carter conversation there quickly well i i thought you were talking about alden smith telling chris carter no no you know no, no. that i'm I, I didn't know you were talking about chris carter That's no, just I, that once he got cut yes. he got his act together his football football career back so like you guys were yes. saying hopefully that should be the when case when i said he them. lied i was talking about alden yeah. smith not yes. chris carter yes 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 okay. okay we're all good how about johnny um, you know, listen, I, I, again, last time I saw Johnny was during the NBA final skip. Um, I like where his head is at. Um, there's a commitment to excellence. He was embarrassed by his performance last year, and he's highly competitive, um, and he wants to be there. He wants to be there for himself. He wants to be there for his teammates, and that's the beauty of professional sports, even to a greater degree than college. There are grown men that you're playing with. They're getting paid. This is their livelihood. They got families to take care of, mm -hmm. families to feed, mortgages to pay. And when you let yourself down in the process, you let them down. And I think that that hit Johnny, hit home with Johnny more so than at any time in his life. And I think he's going to be ready. I mean, if he's not good enough, he's not good enough. Yep. But it won't be for a lack of effort or a lack of commitment. Obviously, Johnny got help in the offseason. And 
God bless him. God bless I, him I for hope that. it takes. I mm -hmm. hope it holds. I hope it continues. But he is being a model citizen. He's finally doing it the right way. This is my personal wish for Johnny. I hope this expedites somebody trading for him before the regular season starts so that he can get a fresh start with a better organization than the Cleveland Browns. That's my wish for him. Well, this is going to be interesting to see what he does because if he's able to succeed on any level in Cleveland, that's going to speak volumes for him down the road elsewhere because we know that Cleveland is a relatively dysfunctional situation. You know, with 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 that, with that management and with Mike Pett, even though he's, he can coach, it's just a dysfunctional situation in terms of player communication. And my only concern for Johnny is this new Johnny who's doing it the right way. I don't want him to lose mm -hmm. that spark that Johnny Football had. So, so you have to do it the right way within the confines of studying and being a model citizen. But at some point. You just got to be Johnny Football, and I hope he, he doesn't want to be called Johnny Football, but I hope he doesn't lose that from his psyche and his game. I don't think that Johnny would mind being called Johnny Football if it's an attribute to what he's doing on yep. the field. Yeah. It's just that he doesn't want to be Johnny stuff. called Johnny Football right now because he knows he doesn't deserve it. Yeah. He knows he doesn't deserve it, but he will. It appears he has his uh, head on straight there, and we hope it works out for him. But we're in Patriots camp, and up next, Rob Ninkovich is going to join us. Early in the show, we talked about the question marks on the Patriots' defense. They lost some key guys like Vince Wilfork. How will they adapt? We'll get into all that on the other side of the break. First take from Foxborough, Massachusetts.